Hi everyone, it's Angela from Shins Greens. And if you have never grown Swiss chard before, you gotta grow it. Now I'm in Southern California, zone 10B, and Swiss chard grew like a champ throughout my growing season, which is our fall, winter, and early spring. And it was literally no maintenance and it produced a ton of food and I had no pest issues throughout the entire growing season. So for the last three to four months, I've been eating a ton of Swiss chard. And how do you cook it? There's so many different ways. So first of all, if you look at the Swiss chard leaf, you'll notice that it looks very similar to beet greens. And it's because they are essentially the same plant, except beet greens are bred for root development and Swiss chard is bred for the leafy greens. Okay. Now, the Swiss chard does have a pretty thick stem, which is still delicious to eat, um, but it just takes longer to cook compared to the tender leafy part. But um, a great way to cook, if you're eating the whole leaf, including the stem, a great way to cook them is in soups. Just throw them in any soup. I've been eating a lot of Swiss chard in miso soup, and it, it's so fast and so easy. It's literally just three ingredients. It's miso paste, water, and Swiss chard, and it's really good. And I think Swiss chard would also taste really good in like an Italian wedding soup. Um, so that's how you can eat the stems. And if you're eating just the tender leafy parts, uh, you would cook it similar to like a spinach. It cooks very fast. If you want to saute with olive oil, a little bit of garlic, and a tiny bit of salt, it cooks down really, really fast. And a huge volume of Swiss chard will cook down to almost nothing. Again, very similar to spinach. Now, as I was experimenting in the kitchen, I came up with this recipe that turned out to be my all-time favorite Swiss chard recipe. And that is Swiss chard and green onion pancakes. And these are savory pancakes, so it's not like the sweet American breakfast food. This is entirely something different. And um, you know, a lot of in Asian cuisine, we eat a lot of you know savory pancakes, including uh, pancakes that have all kinds of different vegetables and seafood, even kimchi, which I love. And um, so I came up with this recipe and I just had to share it. Now, I did not get this recipe from you know on the internet or anywhere. I just made it up myself, so I don't have exact measurements. But that's the beauty of this recipe is that it's very flexible, right? Because you never really know how much or how little Swiss chard you're gonna harvest at any given time, and you, you wanna just use what you have. And you can also add in any other kind of uh, thinly sliced vegetables, like if you add in you know julienne carrots or um, shredded cabbage or onion, that would be really good in this recipe too. Okay, so let's head over to the kitchen and get started.
So I finished making these Swiss chard and green onion pancakes. They smell so good. I can't wait to taste this. Mm. Oh, that is so good. Because Swiss chard is so easy to grow, you're more than likely going to have too much of it. And if you don't know what to do with it, try this recipe out because it's delicious. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Stay tuned for more videos and I'll see you guys next time.